Ace Makhachule reboots his political career with a new party, the African Congress for Transformation. Another coup in Africa, this time in Gabon. <laughs> Penalized for striking, more than 300 protesters will get no pay for staying away. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. Remember to like and subscribe. This is Eyewitness News. More choice for South Africans, a new party at the ballot box. A people's party headed by former ANC Secretary General Ace Makhachule. The same man who was expelled from the ANC two months ago and who has allegations of corruption hanging over his head. Objective today to all of you South Africans, wherever you are, in villages, in small towns, in cities, urban centers, in wards across the country, is to make a clarion call to all of you to find a new political home for the homeless, the betrayed, mm. and the fatigued. He's roped in fired hawk's head, burning in Tlemeza, and a number of ANC councillors to join his movement. His launch, accompanied by a handful of supporters at an eatery on Soweto's popular Vilakazi Street, unveiled a logo showing colours similar to the ANC's green, black and gold, with sprinklings of the EFF's red. His fractious tenor as Secretary General of the ANC left him a weaker politician than when he was elected to the role back in 2017. So what are his chances of success at the ballot box? Another delay in the bail application for Nandipa Magadamana. This is what happened. Well, Dr. Dandipa Magadamana is going to have to wait until Monday to see whether she can be granted bail or not. This after the defense, her advocate, uh, Franz Clamini, poked holes in the state's defense today when she appeared in a second day for her bail hearing. They were unable to conclude the operations in court, and so it had been postponed until Monday. Now, advocate Franz Clamini claims that the schedule on which the state is basing its evidence on a Schedule 5 offense or Schedule 5 offenses in respect of what Magdumana has been charged with um, is not in fact Schedule 5, but rather Schedule 1 offenses. And the state, uh, the state seemed a bit shocked by this revelation when it was brought up in court as they claimed they had previously discussed this with Magadamana's offence and all parties had agreed that she was facing Schedule 5 offences. Now, the state strongly opposes Magadamana's uh, bail application claiming she is a flight risk and therefore she should not be granted bail. But we'll have to wait until Monday before the magistrate makes a decision on whether she can be granted bail or not. For Eyewitness News, I'm Aaron Singh. The man who murdered South Africa's former First Lady, Marika de Klerk, is expected to be released on parole today. The Correctional Services Department confirmed earlier this month that Luyanda Mboniswa has been granted parole, which will come into effect today. Mboniswa, who was 21 at the time of the murder, was sentenced to life imprisonment for the 2001 killing. He broke into the former First Lady's beachfront apartment at Dolphin Beach in Cape Town, where he had been working as a security guard at the premises. He was found guilty of murder, robbery with aggravating circumstances and housebreaking. Correctional Services says Mboniswa will be admitted into the system of community corrections, where he's expected to comply with a specific set of parole conditions. Getting clarity on the South African Reserve Bank's position on Palapala, its governor, Lesetja Kranyaho, says the central bank only focused on exchange control regulations in its probe. Kanyaho says any other alleged violations by the farm or the president are not part of the bank's mandate and investigating powers. And that evidence before the Reserve Bank could not prove that President Cyril Ramaphosa and his farm violated exchange controls by keeping foreign currency. On the facts available to it, cannot conclude that there was a contravention of exchange control regulation 6.1 by either intervening state or the president for that matter. No work, no pay. The Tswani municipality has withheld the salaries of 319 employees this month for participating in the workers' strike. Since the 26th of July, workers affiliated to the South African Municipal Workers' Union had donned their tools over the city's decision not to increase wages this financial year. The capital city has dismissed 122 employees for participating in what it calls an unprotected strike. Where there is no evidence of attendance and no work, no pay principle is applied. 
Salary recalls were implemented in line with the lists submitted by line managers reporting that attendance registers were signed by employees, but no services were rendered. A memo was circulated clarifying the procedure which should be followed if employees did not receive a salary for August of 2023 as a result of the unprotected and illegal strike. A military coup is underway in Gabon. President Ali Bongo Ondimba is under house arrest and one of his sons has been arrested for treason today. This is according to military officers who announced that they've overthrown the government. A military leader said Bongo's son and close advisor, his chief of staff, as well as his deputy, two other presidential advisors and the two top officials in the ruling Gabonese Democratic Party have been arrested. They're accused of treason, embezzlement, corruption, and falsifying the president's signature, among other allegations. The coup against Bongo comes 14 years since he's been in power and just days after he'd been declared the victor in Saturday's elections. That's it from Eyewitness News. See you for more tomorrow. I'm Jane Dutton. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune, and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.